Johnny? you guys but I am really really struggling with lockdown I um, it's not as strict in the US as it is in other countries around the world but I personally have been really really strictly self-isolating all month because my best friend Talita is having a baby any day now and um, she moved here from Brazil just over two years ago and her family can't be here because of the pandemic and her community here is quite small so I'm going to be there to support her and I will be attending the birth. I'm actually going to be filming it to share with her family and close friends so that they can at least have some semblance of the experience and I'm excited and I've prepared as best as I can and that means really really strictly isolating her baby was due on the 22nd and today is the 30th so we're looking at inducement possibly this week but really her baby could come any day i'm essentially on call until then so i've stayed home and honestly my heart is aching and it's not because i'm home alone this weekend it's just such a combination of so many things like the pandemic and the fact that it's winter and I'm just not feeling my best physically, mentally, emotionally. It's all a giant whirlwind and I know that we're all stuck in it right now. Um, this month though has been particularly difficult for me and I just feel very stuck in this weird time warp and I can't believe that it's almost February and I just feel so stuck where I am. Christy Ann Jones put it really well, like I feel like I'm on pause. It's exhausting and it's confusing and I know that we're all so sick and tired of this pandemic and I can't continue to harp on about it because we're all tired of hearing about it, but that doesn't make it go away. It's still so present for all of us. It's still this big thing and we're trying to normalize it in some way so that we can move on but it's preventing us from moving on and it's just all still here and crazy and uh, difficult so in light of choosing to be okay and to rise above it but then also acknowledge what i'm feeling and give myself the rest that I need and to sit with it and just not try and bulldoze past it like I so often do. 
Um, I'm having a self-care weekend. I'm turning this lonely weekend into a weekend in which I prioritize doing my favorite things to do by myself. And um, I'm not going to feel guilty about it because part of me wants to guilt myself because it feels like I haven't been productive and I haven't gotten nearly as many things done as I would have wanted to. And even though that's the case, it's still okay to pause and rest because I feel exhausted and I feel drained and heavy. So I'm seeing this weekend as an opportunity to take care of myself and to try my best to reset, to hopefully feel inspired for next month to kind of get back on track and find some semblance of organization and routine. So my friends, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for keeping me company on what could have been a very lonely weekend. Um, we're being productive, but not in the achievement task oriented way. We're being productive in a do all the things we love to do to feel better kind of way. So here's what's on our agenda. First off, pancakes. Pancakes and Gilmore Girls because one, I'm super hungry and two, Gilmore Girls always makes me feel better. This is my first time ever watching it. I'm just about halfway through season three, so I'm really enjoying it. It makes me laugh and just enjoy being a girl. So pancakes and Gilmore Girls. I've already gone on a walk and had a play with Rue this morning. Seriously, the absolute best way to wake up. I did some yoga with Adrienne. I'm doing her 30 day breath challenge and honestly, I'm so proud of myself. Tomorrow is the last day and I've done it every single day. I've never been able to stick with any sort of yoga challenge this long, so yay! Then I plan on reading. I have really been enjoying reading this month. If all else fails, at least I've read a lot. I finished two really big books. They're right here, actually. Um, Wildwood and Shadow of Night. So I finished Shadow of Night last night. It's part of the All Souls trilogy. And you guys, I loved it so much. I love this trilogy. The best way I can think to describe it is an adult twilight mixed with some dark academia and a touch of Outlander sprinkled in on top, whatever this is. <laughs> Also, the author, Deborah Harkness, is a historian, so it's super rich with history. There are inventors, writers, monarchies. We get to experience it all, and it's so cozy and so well written. The detail is incredible, and I really, really enjoy the characters. Like, so good. So good. There are, of course, a handful of things that bother me, but I'm not gonna get into detail. Maybe I'll do a whole review once I've read the third book in the trilogy. But um, today I plan on starting The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is the book that I'm reading this month with my book club, The Society of Sunbeams and Happenstance on Patreon. I'm really looking forward to starting it. From what I understand, it's rich with Russian folklore and I'm very unfamiliar with Russian culture, so I'm excited. It's wintry and cozy, also kind of dark. I think it's the perfect February read. So I wanna dig into this one today. I'm really feeling like reading. Also this weekend, I'd like to play a little bit of Zelda, super into it. Um, make my first ever sourdough. I've been growing a starter. It's taken a really long time. It should take about a week to two weeks, and it's taken a month because I think I messed up the measurements in the beginning and then also it's really cold in our house so it just grows slower but I'm having my first go at sourdough. I went ahead and did the first step this morning and there's a whole uh, bunch of other steps I have to do to be able to bake it tomorrow morning. So we'll see how that goes. I'd also like to paint my nails and then do a bit of drawing. Um, of course we have to have a spa night and then I'd like to get organized with my plan for next month because it just feels so good to just get everything out on paper, write on all of my to-dos and um, feel kind of lighter going into next month, just with a better sense of direction than I had this month. So I'm gonna put that on, make some pancakes, watch some Gilmore Girls, do some reading. We'll see where the rest of the day takes us. Cheers, friends. Mm. All right, let's get to it. Oh, 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 oh. 
So I'm 40 pages into The Bear and the Nightingale, and I'm not gripped. It's intriguing, but it's been kind of a slow start. I do want to do a ton of research because I am so unfamiliar with Russian culture. I need to research Ivan the First because he's mentioned quite a bit, and then also characters' names change subtly, but at the moment I'm not going to say the names to give examples because I know I'll just butcher the pronunciation and I really want to research it before I try and speak it so I'll just pop some examples right here. So I want to learn why the names change like that and um, then also just research the folklore. I want to actually look up the folktale about frost and learn its origins and how it really is intertwined with the winter culture in Russia. So that's where I'm at with Baron Nightingale but it's time for me to uh, work on my sourdough. So I am very much inspired by Cheyenne Barton. I watch most all of her videos. She is an artist and she makes a lot of sourdough and has inspired me to get started. And I've been working on my starter for a month, like I said. And so far this morning, I feel naive because I thought this would be like an hour, not an hour, but like a, few hour type thing to do in the course of one day but no 
you're going to make sourdough, at least the recipe that I'm following, you have to start at 8 a.m. one day to bake the bread at 9.30 a.m. the next day. And it's very involved. So I've made my levain, levain, which is my starter mixed with flour and water. And that's been sitting for about five hours. And then I also made my autolyse, I hope I'm saying that correctly, but that's a ton of different flowers mixed with water and that has sat for an hour. And now it is time, I'm just scrolling. That's why I keep looking at my computer. So now it is time to mix the two together and add some salt and water again and then let that ferment. And during the fermentation process, I need to, um, stretch and fold the sourdough um, at least three times or exactly three times so let's go ahead and combine everything so that it can ferment and i can stretch and fold it Here is my Levain, looking nice and bubbly. Ba -ba -da -da. My auto ice. Hmm. I hope I mixed it enough. <laughs> complicated than I had anticipated, but I think it gets easier after the first time, right? I hope so. Um, I'm so tired, and so I think that I'm going to call it a night with a nice hot shower, some eye patches underneath my tired eyes, and a movie. That sounds really good to me, so let's do it. <laughs>
Is a root butt. Let me show you. <laughs> as long as he's comfortable, am I right? Um, so I have spent this morning journaling and I've actually just completed this journal, which is a milestone. I have kept and maintained this journal, regularly writing in it, not regularly, but frequently. Um, casually for the past two years. This journal contains two years of my life and I actually feel really shaky right now because I have spent the past hour and a half reading through it and looking back to just two years ago. This time, two years ago, I was so unwell. Um, I had zero self-confidence. I was working a job that was terrible and had no structure. My self-talk was so negative. I didn't feel like I had any friends. I had zero energy. I was actually waiting to hear back if I had gotten a full-time job that I had applied for within the company that I was already working for. And I remember writing this journal entry and trying so hard to convince myself that I wanted this job, but I knew in my gut that I didn't want it. It's really important to me that you guys know where I come from and like how I've gotten to this point and just if you are in a part of your life where you don't have things figured out and you just feel like you have so much potential to be doing something else and you want to be fulfilled in a different way I know what that's like and it's really important to me that you know that that is okay it's okay to not have things figured out and you're worthy of your dream life. It is possible, it's more than possible, it's going to happen. As soon as you figure out what it is that you want and you accept it and admit it to yourself and others, it's going to be yours. So I wanted to read to you guys a journal entry that I wrote nearly two years ago in hopes that maybe somebody out there can relate to it and feel hopeful and less alone because you are more than worthy of living your dream life and if I can do it so can you <laughs> and I know that maybe I feel so different from you or my situation is so different and probably it is but I was once just so lost and so confused and so just heartbroken um, so here we go. I'm going to read this. Okay. 
It's called A Starry Bright Epiphany and I wrote it on May 6th of 2019. So many things are going through my head right now. Namely, this internal conflict with myself over my dreams versus a full-time job. I've wandered kind of aimlessly in hopes of getting a full-time job, but I haven't been fully committed due to fears of unworthiness and maybe not wanting to lose a chance to follow my dreams. But what even are my dreams? Since I was young, I've promised myself I never have to struggle with money or let financial struggle rule my life. I also always lived with this overcoming sense of potential. I couldn't wait to be independent. I knew I was so much bigger than the life I was living. Somehow, I've gotten lost. But this came at a time in my life where my actions were very important for my future. Later years of college, when I was meant to be deciding what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, I found this incredibly overwhelming, and instead of really looking inside myself and asking what I wanted to do, I fell into a trap again, and I followed the norm. I tried really, really hard at school, a school I was told I needed to attend in order to get a good job. Trying hard at school in the past had gotten me where I needed to be, or at least gotten me praise and perceived excess. I thought it would get me to my next stage of life. Fast forward to now, I've had more than a year's worth of experience in the real world, and contrary to my brainwashing, I was not handed a job out of university, even though I tried really, really hard and graduated number one in my class. Instead, I was handed nearly $40,000 in student loan debt, and no one has cared that I did so well in college or that I even went. <laughs> this year has undone me in so many ways, the biggest of which has been a huge punch to my self-confidence and sense of worth. Many of my biggest fears have come true. So far away from home, no money, hardly any friends. I cry most every night, but I'm realizing what all of this has done is stripped me of false securities that I dove into all those years ago. It's left me with nothing but myself, my personality, my own talents, my own determination, my beautiful self. And it's terrifying to put myself out there, but I need to. So what I meant is that moving across the country and diving into the real world with not really a solid plan stripped me of money, it stripped me of family and friends, it stripped me of like literally everything, my self-confidence, my sense of worth, everything except for Landon because Landon has stood with me through all of this and for that I have no words. Just know that I love him with my whole heart. So during this phase of my life I have like nothing and so many of the worst possible case scenarios had come true but losing all of that or removing myself from all of that I came to understand my own character and what it was that I actually really wanted with my life because I had nobody there to influence me and really nothing else to lose. I'm remembering my dreams. I'm welcoming back this sense of potential. Thank you. I love you. It is written in the stars. With love, Morgan. My journal says it's written in the stars. So I remember that it was around that time, two years ago, that I remembered that I wanted to be a videographer. I wanted to be a photographer. And I had known for a very long time that I wanted to be a YouTuber, um, but that seemed absolutely impossible. Preposterous. Who would want to watch videos of me living my life? What? <laughs> Three years later, here we are. I don't know if you guys have been here since um, April of last year, but around that time I was told that I was basically losing my job and I was kind of panicking because I was going from, well, having a job and some semblance of financial security to not in a matter of two weeks because of the pandemic. And I just was so scared. I had no idea what to do. And I was, the idea of starting over yet again was terrifying. So I guess what my point is in sharing all of this with you guys or what I'm trying to say is security does not exist. Or at least that if it is the fear of losing security that's holding you back from doing what you really want to do, try to get over that. Try to let that go because 
you could spend two years getting that security only to have it ripped out from under you from something like a world pandemic. So do the best you can, friends, and let the rest go. Also, believe in yourself, oh wondrous you. Cheers to that, guys. Oh, I am shaking. I feel very vulnerable. Um, I don't know. I just was so hard on myself through all of this, and um, I wish that I had been more accepting and shown myself a bit more love, a bit more grace, and been more okay with just not having it figured out and trusting that the work I was doing, all the self-work, self-awareness work I was doing was gonna lead me to the right place. Here we are. Thank you so much for being here. Always, it is because you are standing, sitting, laying right there that I'm right here. So, thanks friends. I recommend writing in a journal. <laughs>